Well, in this talk, uh, um, I will uh, um, illustrate the interplay between uh, free will and uh, quantum physics. Actually, I will highlight that quantum physics is assuming free will uh, as a basic principle of science. Second, I will stress that uh, the material visible world cannot be explained exclusively by uh, material visible principles. And uh, finally, I will um, argue that uh, there is not such a thing like pure randomness in the world. Uh, randomness as in the sense of lack of control. Randomness and uh, non-material control, control coming from outside space-time, are inseparably together. To begin with, we have to, I would like to uh, explain you in a very simple way the concept of quantum non-locality. Uh, that, in my opinion, is today the, uh, we could say, the crucial notion in quantum physics, uh, much more relevant than in determinism. We have here a um, laser source uh, emitting light uh, and uh, this here is a um, half silvered mirror, a beam splitter, so that 50% of the light goes uh, transmitted and 50% goes reflected. If we put here two detectors, this detector will fire 50% uh, of the time uh, and this one will fire 50% of the time. So each detector will uh, count 50% uh, of the counts produced by the light particles. Well, now suppose we build an interferometer this way Here we put full silver mirrors to guide the light so that the light is guided to this detector here and to this detector here. For the moment, here we put nothing. Then, uh, how would you say? How many percent of the light get we here in this detector. You will say, well, the same than before, so 50% and 50% here. Uh, well, now suppose that we put here another silver mirror like this one here, so that exactly another beam splitter here. The question is now how many uh, percent of the light of the counts we have in this detector and how many we have in this one. So, if we are reasoning with the model of particles 
we will say here is coming 50% and then here you get 25% and 25% and the same for the other path so then you get here 25% and here 25% and, and then you would say we get here 50% and 50% again. Well, uh, the result of the experiment uh, refutes this explanation. Actually, if it is an interferometer, a Mach sender interferometer, and uh, the experiment shows that we get here 100% and here zero percent. How is this possible? Well, the idea, the explanation was given with the model of waves, stating that light behaves like waves. So that um, if you have uh, a wave coming this way, then this wave will be partially transmitted and partially reflected. And now you have another wave coming this way. And this way will again be partially uh, transmitted and partially reflected. But there is a difference because here the red wave is transmitted and here reflected and the other one is reflected and transmitted. So they come out with the same phase. Okay? And then we have constructive interference. For the other path, you have reflection and trans um, yeah, you have reflection here and reflection and here you have transmission and transmission. This, I would not enter the ties, produce that the waves are coming in opposite phase. Okay? One is coming so and the other is coming so. So you have here destructive interference and then you get 0%. Okay? That is our experimental facts. Now, we can go ahead and uh, suppose that we can change a bit the path of this, of the, the length of this path by a device we could put here so mirrors so this device allow me to change the length of this path. What happens then? Then it is quite interesting. Suppose we, we say this is the detector 1 and this is the detector 0. So we hear probably uh, we, 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 we can uh, represent here how the counts, the counting, the rate is, the counting rates in the detectors change. If you put here the phase and here the counting rate, okay, then for detector one, you are going 
at the beginning 100% and then you get a sine curve like this and for the other one you get the opposite. It starts with zero, it goes to hundred, and again to zero, and so on. Okay, so that is what we get from the experiment. What means this? This means that uh, really it seems that light is behaving according to the model of quakes. But that is not the whole story, because um, if light would be uh, exclusively behaving like quakes, then we get the following prediction. Um, take, for instance, the case where we have here for instance here 60 percent and here 40 percent okay then this means this detector all detectors are firing They are, both detectors are receiving waves, information, so they are firing together. And uh, this one will fire a bit stronger and this a bit weaker. But all the time they have to fire together because waves are arriving to both detectors. Hmm? And this would be the case even if we work with very weak light. Because to have waves here and waves here. Okay? But that is not the case. When you are, when you diminish the intensity of light, then you get either this detector fires and this doesn't fire, or the opposite. This fire and this doesn't fire. So that is actually amazing because you see what happens here is that both detectors are working, are functioning according to the information of the two paths but at the moment of uh, firing they have to have a coordination some agency is coordinating these two detectors so that if the one fire, the other doesn't fire, and vice versa. Well, this is the, uh, this idea was already so old be the uh, beginnings of quantum physics in the year uh, 1927 was exposed in the Solvay Congress by the uh, Copenhagen group, the Copenhagen School, also people like Niels Bohr, uh, Heisenberg, Bernard Heisenberg, Max Born, and then Einstein was quite upset. Why? Uh, because uh, if uh, things are uh, this way, when these two detectors are near to each other, suppose we can put this part of the experiment we put here, So, 
We can put these two detectors far away from each other so that there is no time for any communication between them. This means that uh, uh, if there is a coordination between these two detectors quite far away from each other, then this communication should happen faster than light. And that is why Einstein was quite uh, upset and against quantum physics. Mm. He said, look, this cannot be true, this cannot... Uh, uh, and, uh, and therefore quantum physics is incomplete and uh, it is actually wrong. It has to be completed. This was the position of Einstein. Um, so, this experiment, eh, uh, quite simple one, is amazingly uh, has not been done till quite recently. Also, this, uh, in this, the other sophisticated experiments have been done. But this one has been finished some weeks ago in the lab at Geneva of quantum optics and we hope to publish uh, soon the results in the archive. But um, you can uh, see, suppose that we, we put these detectors far away, then what will happen? Each detector will fire at random without coordination. Then you will get uh, uh, 50% of the times you will get uh, when zero, also detector zero, uh, detector, uh, excuse me, what? Det this detector fires here and this detector doesn't fire, 50% of the time you get the other case and 50% of the time you get the two detectors fire and 50% of the time you get no count in each detector. Okay? Also, I will say the first uh, number here means whether detector 1 fires or not, and the second one whether detector 0 fires or not. So, you will get this, uh, this uh, prediction if there is no coordination when they are far away, and the, the experiment shows that this is not the case. This case doesn't exist. So actually what you get is here 50% and here 50%. Like when the two detectors are near to each other. Okay? So this means that even when the two detectors are far away, we have this non-local coordination. What means this? Actually, it means that there is here some uh, principle coordinating these two detectors which uh, cannot be explained by means of signals of light. Hmm? Uh, you cannot uh, uh, explain because here it would require a coordination which goes faster than light. So we have here then a phenomenon where there is some agency, some principle coordinating these two detectors which comes from outside space time. And uh, this is the same as to say, well, it is not uh, 
material, but it is in the sense that uh, no material in the sense that it is not uh, observable. It is not something that you can directly detect. It is not visible, so to speak. Once again, you have visible results, detections, that are rolled by some invisible principle. That is the statement. We come now to the... Uh, well, I would, before I go to the second part, I would like to show you that an interesting, quite recent result, too, is that this kind of uh, quantum phenomena, you can call this interference or quantum coherence, this is entering now the domain of biology. For instance, to explain photosynthesis, um, there are now works uh, experimental work showing that uh, you have to have some kind of quantum interference or coherence. Things are going like this, quite roughly and quite simple explained. Photosynthesis you have in the leaves of the plants certain So call it light harvesting complexes, or large complexes with many cells and molecules. And when light arrives here, when photon of light hits here a uh, molecule, then this molecule becomes, uh, ejects an electron and becomes charged with a positive charge and the, a negative one. So, you have the molecule, the electron goes away and then the molecule remains uh, positively charged but the electron and the molecule remain bound. This is called it an exciton. It is like uh, a molecule, molecule which is prepared to give energy. But to do this, this molecule has to reach here, this center. That is the reaction center. Okay? <clears throat> and what we are discovering, what we are observing, are phenomena that uh, um, this we know we know that to go from here to here it is like uh, a random walk you would uh, come probably hit here and go away or come here 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 and probably go away again so if you try to explain how this exciton reach this reaction center to produce the photosynthesis, to produce the sugars, then if you try to explain this by classical means eh, of a random walk, you get a very low efficiency. efficiency. However, we know that this process is quite efficient to a great efficient of 99%. How can we have such a great efficiency? Uh, that is not uh, um, uh, understandable, understandable by classical means. It's like if you shoot a ball through a forest. The probability that the ball reaches the other uh, uh, edge of the forest is um, uh, practically 
small, yeah, very small. And however, we have this big efficiency here. Well, and that is because there is an interplay of quantum coherence, quantum interference, and the classical decoherence phenomena. It is this interplay that allows this big efficiency. I would like to illustrate this with uh, this idea. This is the uh, reaction center, okay? And uh, here you have the photons arriving. Eh? And uh, you see, then efficiency is very little. Eh? What the quantum interference uh, uh, produce here is uh, like uh, a funnel. Hmm? It is the quantum interference allows um, uh, makes that the energy is funnel to the reaction center. You see, then it is much bigger efficiency. Well, the interesting point is oh, what I am saying is that this uh, uh, funnel, eh, this uh, you can say this quantum funnel, is not uh, uh, material. Is not in the sense that is not busy. Is not something tangible. Eh? Is not something that is in space and time and you can access. It is not something that you can access. And uh, you can say, well, it is a law of nature, sure, but this law of nature is not registered in space and time. Okay, that is... So, this kind of phenomena are now uh, becoming important also it is not uh, very at the, it is at very at the beginning, but it seems that for instance in plants also in ion channels yeah, we have quantum interference playing a role. Um, the second point I will stress is that um, we have said that if we would not have this coordination here between this uh, so this non-local coordination coming from outside the space time then 25% uh, of the times you will have both detectors firing one count here and one count here. And uh, in 50% of the times, zero counts here and zero counts here. That is to say that energy is not conserved. Because if you have here one photon arriving, it is a packet of energy, if the detectors are not coordinated, then sometimes would fire both together. So you would have one photon and two counts. And sometimes you would have one photon and no count. Neither here nor here. We, and what this means that the energy would be conserved in the average but not in each single quantum event. So, you see that the most material uh, principle of physics, the conservation of energy, is related to non-locality. This means to non-material control. You can say something 
coming from outside the space time. So once again, the visible, the 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 the, <laughs> the principal role in the visible world requires invisible, unobservable influences. We come to the third part of the of the talk, and uh, it is the unite the unite the unity of randomness and control. We, once again, we get one count here and no count here, or one count here and no count here. We note, the, for instance, uh, if detector one fires, we uh, write here one, if the other, if the detector zero fires, we write zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, and so on. Okay? So, this is the, the, simply the sequence of the outcomes we can get here in the experiment. Uh, what quantum physics tell us is uh, the percent, the, the rate of ones that we have in this sequence, or the rate of the zeros we get in the sequence. That is what quantum physics tell us. However, the order of these bits about this physics says nothing. So that uh, actually uh, in the lab we will get here something that we call random in the sense that it, it, it looks as meaningless. But uh, be careful because even when you have this and you say there is no meaning here but there is already this control in order to coordinate the two detectors. So you have here not pure randomness eh, in the sense of lack of control. Eh. You have mm, something which is not uh, meaningful for us, but it, there is here already a control coming from outside space-time. And what is more is that um, quantum physics uh, is perfectly compatible with the idea that you could get here the Divina Comedia digitalized. This would be perfectly compatible with quantum physics. Okay? So you say, well, but in the lab, we then get here the Divina Comedia. That is true. But uh, I say uh, we have human brains and uh, the human brains uh, are, in a sense, physical devices working also according to physical principles. And uh, when I am speaking now to you, I am producing outcomes. Uh, outcomes that uh, we could digitalize and then we have here outcomes which are which have uh, a meaning yeah? and this is perfectly compatible with quantum physics uh, nevertheless yeah? also in this case would you say well uh, we have here pure intentional behavior we can have a behavior also pure consciousness um, are human brains devices uh, which can work all the time according to a free will uh, pattern can we say are we 
uh, pure consciousness in the sense you, you, I understand uh, can I indefinitely produce a behavior which is intentional and according to what uh, I wish to produce yes what happens with sleep Okay. Also, in, I, 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 I would say that also in the case of the human brain, we have not always, all the time, a behavior which is meaningful. But we have also, because of this fundamental principle of this sickle, wake, sleep, also there, you have a high level of conscious behavior, but also combined with random behavior. So we have here, this is what I want to stress, we have at the level of device like this in the lab, you, you can say you have a high amount or a high level of randomness but also control, non-material control, coming from outside the space-time. And you have, in the case of devices like the human brains, you have a high level of conscious behavior, but also combined with a behavior which is not uh, uh, um, intentional, which is uh, to some extent random. That is what happens in sleep. Uh, I want to say still something that this cycle of sleep and uh, wake, I am not saying this is something that you explain by quantum physics, but uh, I think personally that is, it is, this is much more fundamental than quantum physics. Sleep is today a very poor understood phenomenon and I think we have to work much more also to understand sleep in order to understand the basic roles of the, how the, the basic physical roles of the universe. So here I would like to finish. We can now discuss the different points of the talk. Thank you very much.